Hi, it's Mike. Thanks for clicking on the video. Welcome to my channel. Hope you're having a great day. As some of you might know through my previous videos, I like to build tube amplifiers. And in guitar amplifiers, I prefer the Fender Tweed amps. I think they're really cool amps and cool circuitries and somewhat relatively easy to build. I've built uh, many over the years, Princeton's, uh, Deluxe's, Supers, and most recently this Harvard amp. Now this Harvard amp is a little bit of a strange beast. Um, there's not a lot of information on the net on how to build it. And I don't even think there is a kit available to build a Harvard amp like this. But I managed to figure out how to scratch build this amp. So what I'm going to do in this video here is we're going to go through this amplifier. I'll show you all the components that I used. I'll show you what circuit I used and what voltages I ended up getting because I don't think the Fender ones is all that correct what they doc document. And I'll go through all the other nuances with this circuit and how I made this amp kind of behave a little better. So when it comes to Tweed amps, most people tend to build the Tweed Deluxes or the Tweed Vibrolux or even the Super. A lot of the Tweed amps actually sound the same at lower volume, but when you start cranking it up, they start to behave a lot differently. Whereas the Tweed Deluxe tends to uh, break up and kind of get really grungy sounding, kind of like that Neil Young tone. Whereas the Harvard seems to hold itself together and, and stays cleaner at a higher volume. The Harvard has lower voltage than the Tweed Deluxe and therefore I, it kind of affects the output. But realistically, I think at the volume wise, these amps do sound very similar. So let's go into the shop. I'll take the back apart and we'll go through the circuitry and the components and I'll show you what I did. So we've got the back off here and you can see all the components. I'm using Sprag electrolytic capacitors, orange drop coupling capacitors. I made my own eyelet board using a piece of phenolic and you can see how I did that on my one watt amplifier build. I'm fortunate enough to have an electronic store that carries all these electrical components at a really reasonable rate so I can just drive there with my pick list and pick everything I want and it's actually cheaper than when I can find anything online, surprisingly enough. So this chassis comes from Mojo Tone. It's their Tweed Princeton chassis and it has a volume and tone and two inputs. The Tweed Princeton is only a single ended tube so you have to cut a new hole for the other 6V6 tube and you have to cut the other hole for the 6AT6 on the end there, the smaller one. So you have to modify the chassis a bit but it's not that hard and everything fits in nicely. So the layout I used is based on the 5F10 circuit and the eyelet board is based on this diagram and it's two and a half inches wide. I did not use a selenium rectifier, I used a proper diode and I did not follow the grounding scheme for the filament circuit as recommended. That doesn't work very well, it puts, puts a lot of noise into the system. I used the 100 ohm virtual center tap, that seems to work good. What I ended up doing was following the Tweed Deluxe layout that Mojo Tone has on their website and I just used the same grounding scheme and the filament layout, but I just wound my filament wires a little tighter together. So that's a good reference you can use for that. So for the schematic, I followed the recommended Fender Harvard schematic that you can get online. The transformer I used doesn't actually have a fixed bias tap. So using the Fender 6G3 circuit, you take it off the actual proper hot tap off the transformer and change the values here and you'll get your proper bias. So I have this all laid out. I have the values I use. I have the transformers I use and what voltages I got that seems to work good. Um, these seem to be more in line with um, the components I'm using and what actually sounds pretty decent. So as I mentioned, I'll be putting this in the description below and you can download it for your own reference. So these are tubes I'm using. We're using the 5Y3 from JJ. It's a pretty good tube. I'm happy with it. It um, is close to NOS voltage. I'm using Electro Harmonix 6V6 GT tubes and they seem to be pretty good. I'm using Electro Harmonix 12AX7. I don't think it really matters what tube you use in this. It all seems to sound the same. But what's really crucial in this amp um, is the 6AT6 tube. And the 6AT6 tube is kind of a funky tube. It's a little smaller than the 12AX7 tube. This only has one triode section in it. And I had to buy a bunch of them in order to find one that was not microphonic. So when you buy the tube, order a bunch right away so you find one that's not microphonic. They tend to be. And I also 
it's sandwiched a washer in there and you can find these in your plumbing section of your local hardware store and that is just sandwiched between the chassis and the tube socket and the nut and washer here to hold the tube socket in is also has rubber grommets to help the isolation of that so if the speaker vibrates the chassis it doesn't vibrate the tube too much like i say these can be microphonic so get a bunch of them the power transformer I'm using is the Mojo 760 and that's 330 volt at 75 milliamps and I believe that's made by Haybar. The output transformer is also a Mojo and that's the Mojo 768 and it's the actually the 5E3 output transformer multi-tap. So the chassis is out and you have a better look inside. I made my own tube chart there to make it look authentic as possible. The speaker is actually a Fender speaker that came out of a more modern Princeton. I got it on Craigslist uh, for 50 bucks. I guess the guy changed his speaker out to a ceramic and I picked that up. This speaker really suits this amplifier. I made my own cabinet here. So this is uh, clear pine, finger jointed together and the tweed is from Mojo Tone as well. And so I tweed it all up and put a little bit of uh, lacquer over top of it as well to help preserve it. So I try to make this amplifier as period correct as possible. So I got the 10 inch speaker. The cabinet side is pretty close to what the Harvard was. So I went to the Fender Field Amp Guide. I figured out what the dimensions were. And then I used the Fender Tweed Deluxe um, plans that you can get online. They're all over the internet. And I used that as a basis to build this cabinet. Now, if you weren't really looking to make a period correct amplifier, I think a really good choice would be to make the Fender 5E3 cabinet with a 12 inch speaker and then cut out the chassis for the Harvard. And that would make a pretty sweet amp itself. I do believe that the cabinet size has a lot to do with the tone and how it resonates. I think part of the reason why you don't see a lot of these kits offered or people making them is it's a bit of a funky circuit to make. Um, the 6AT6 is not really a common tube. Uh, the fixed bias uh, setup here is a little kind of odd to play with. Uh, my recommendation would be to put a bias pod in there so you help you adjust the bias. And even just measuring the bias is a little bit tricky as well. Since this doesn't have a cathode resistor like a 5E3, it's a little bit difficult to measure them. So in order to measure this, you have to actually measure the voltage drop across the output transformer and then figure out what the resistance is and then do your bias calculation that way. I'll put a link in the description below on how to do that and once you wrap your head around it, it's actually pretty simple. Well, I hope you found that information informative and inspires you to build your own Harvard clone from scratch. As I mentioned, I'll put a link in the description below of all the components I use and the schematic with the voltages I got. I don't think the documented fender voltages are all that correct in this build, so uh, your mileage may vary. If you're interested in a badge like this, let me know. I make these badges and I also sell the Mylar stickers where you can make your own badge as well. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. Um, I'm gonna be doing an AB between the Harvard here and my Tweed Deluxe, and so you can hear the difference between the two. Um, like I said, at low volume, they sound very similar, but when you start cranking it up, they behave quite differently. Well, I hope you found this video informative, and once again, thanks for watching.